There are certain traditions which make you know that it's the holidays, the Macy's Day Parade, sales after Thanksgiving, and, of course, if you live in San Francisco, you know it's the holidays when it's time for the Christmas episodes of The Golden Girls. <laughs> Next up, Hecklina, one of the stars of that show. How are you? Good, good. Thank you. That's so, so flattering that you say it's a tradition because it kind of has become one, yeah. but very quickly, only over the past few years. Yeah. And we love that. So. And, so, and, and, of course, you are Dorothy Spornak yes. in The Golden Girls. Uh, yes, and you know, it, it's very fitting because I am uh, a big girl, and uh, we all know B. Arthur was a big girl. She was too. a big girl. Yeah, yeah. And um, I, was, I was never really a, a huge fan of the show until I began doing the production, and then I fell in love with B. Arthur and the way she portrays Dorothy's born ex. So. Right. Now, you say you weren't a fan of the show, so like when, when they came to you and said, we have this crazy idea, we want to do a drag version of the Golden Girls, did... You knew the show, though. Well, I, I, when I say I wasn't a fan, it wasn't that I did dislike the uh -huh. show. It, I wasn't crazy about it, like yeah. so many people are. But then the more I studied the show and watched all the, the actresses portray their parts, I fell really in love with it. And the writing is great, too. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's great comedic writing. Because what you do is really not, it's not an homage to the show, <clears throat> and it's not a parody. It is the actual show. The, the, the words you speak are the words that we would have seen in the Christmas episodes of the Golden Girls, correct? Correct, and it is, uh, it's, it's not really an homage like you say, but the show was already so gay, and I think <laughs> it, it, it became really obvious, like when you read about the the people who played the characters, they were very pro-gay. They tackled issues that were that were you know gay themed, but of course there's many more layers added to it when you have four drag queens playing these yes. it's even more gay but it's still family friendly uh -huh. so uh the great thing about the show is, is after the show we talk to the audience and it's always a, a gay boy or girl and they're like these are my parents they're visiting me for christmas you know and so so did you ever think as uh, a drag performer a drag queen that you would have parents coming to a show you did no because well parents yours or any others parents have come to my show before at, at tranny shack but it's not it's not parent friendly this show the golden girls is family friendly so i think anybody can feel safe bringing their family there they're right. not going to be i won't even tell you what they could see at tranny shack i will i'm not sure going to see that <laughs> so what uh well i mean what i was going to say was it sounds like it's almost become in a sense political mm. You well, mean, I mean, the, the well, I mean, it, it, would you have ever thought that you would be doing a show for for families? And here you are, as much of a, a, a character as you would be a tranny shack, and you're saying it's a family friendly show. Doesn't that, in a sense, show where the LGBT community has has gone? We've become mainstream in a way. Oh uh, well, yeah, I think we became mainstream kind of well before that. But uh -huh. I feel that, yeah, I think that because of the where we are now, I don't think that this show would have been as as family friendly had we done it. 20 years ago, right. but I think now people, uh, I, I don't, I think that they, there are certain shows that, that are going on that, that, you know, that, you know, it's just something that the writing and everything like that, um, everybody can relate to it. Right. Now you said that uh, before you did the Christmas episodes of the Golden Girls, you knew the show, you weren't a big fan, have now you become a fan? I mean, now do you watch the Golden Girls when it's on MeTV or Well, no, TV? I, I have all seven seasons on DVD. <laughs> and so, uh, right, well right now I'm doing a show called Roseanne. When I'm getting ready, when I'm getting in drag, I put on Roseanne on DVD and watch it in the background. And when I'm doing Golden Girls, I put I put, uh, of course I know every episode now, almost by heart, but I put it on and listen to it, and, and especially the episodes we're doing, I, I watch it right. over and over again. And neither of the episodes were, well actually one was, but the other episode wasn't written as a Christmas episode, but we wrote it, we changed some of the writing mm -hmm. to make it seem like a Christmas episode. Right. Now, in the show, are you Hecklina, as Do or are you Dorothy Spornak, or are you B. Arthur? Or can you even separate them? Uh, I can't really separate them because B. Arthur, even when she played Maud, she was essentially the same person, the same mm -hmm. mannerisms. So I guess to answer your question, I'm, I'm B. Arthur. Uh huh. Yeah, B. Arthur had an amazing. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that I'm as good as she is, but she had an amazing comic timing, and uh, so I'm trying to to match her comic timing. Right. Now, of course, as you as you said, the Golden Girls, because of its writing and some of the issues it dealt with, it dealt with having gay children, it dealt with AIDS, HIV, it dealt with some issues that when it was big in the 80s and 90s, we as an LGBT community were dealing with, not on TV, but in yeah. real life. 
But do you think there's also something else about it that made it popular with gay people? Because I think you're right. It, it is a quote unquote very gay show. Well, I think what made it popular, I think that that underneath, I feel like we can tell that those are good women portraying these characters. And and you know, we I study up on them, and I know that Estelle Getty, for instance, traveled with the whole posse of gay men wherever she went. Uh, B. Arthur, of course, was very pro-gay, uh, and but I think. More than that, every gay man, whenever a group of gay men come see the show, I'll talk to them afterwards, and they'll, some of them will be dressed up, but they'll say, oh, I'm the Blanche, or I'm the Dorothy, or I, you know what I mean? So you can relate to every character. They've become iconic. they become, become iconic, and I think every gay man wishes they could sit down in that kitchen for cheesecake with those characters, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I know I do. Right. So. Now, we were joking before the, the show started about, God, wouldn't this make a great reality show backstage at uh, the Golden Girls? And you said that you actually have had some interest in maybe pitching or doing a reality show. Yeah, I've had several pitches. Back when the Tranny Shack was at the stud, we, three different production companies uh, made pitches to Bravo, to Logo, to, I don't know, I think twice to Bravo maybe. Mm -hmm. um, and then... I did a pitch, a different pitch with a different company to Bravo again. Then recently I did a pitch with uh, Rob Epstein and Jeffrey Friedman. Oh, the, the, the two local filmmakers that did, uh, they the, did uh, the famous documentary on the quilt right. and the life of the life Harvey, of Milk. Of Harvey, Harvey Milk. Milk. Uh, and they wanted to shoot a narrative show for HBO and Showtime. And they didn't, they wanted to, they didn't even want to bother with Logo or any of that. So they wanted to go straight for the Showtime money. And uh, we, they had a power, PowerPoint presentation. They went to Los Angeles and met with the executives. And it, it, was, it was like those pitches always go. It was like, yes, 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 yes. Oh, they passed. You know, that, it always gets to a certain level, uh -huh. and then somebody passes. So, so and why do you think that was? I think, <clears throat> if my real opinion is I feel like America in general, and this is going to sound terrible, they only want to see something about Honey Boo Boo or Real Housewives. They don't want to think too hard about anything. Uh -huh. and, and even the drag stuff that's out there, um, the RuPaul's Drag Race, I love all those people that do the show, but it's essentially a contest, and it's, a, it's not really reality. Yes. You know, like uh, those situations they put the drag queens in, no drag queen, no established <laughs> drag queen is going to make their own dress or do their own wig. and You know what I mean? So yes. it's not really real. Mm -hmm. But I think that the situations they wanted to put me in were, were, were real. Um, they wanted to put, well, one of them that I really wanted to do was to get on a bus with a bunch of other drag queens and travel through the red states. Uh huh. So, as Heclina. As Heclina, and put on shows in non traditional venues and, uh -huh. um, and see how people reacted to all that. Of course, you have to kind of have some unreality when you shoot reality. Like, you know, they stage situations. And so, but it would have been a lot of fun. Yeah, it would be like a cross between Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, and Tu Wang Fu. I mean, I can see you now. It would have been a cross between. Uh, Priscilla and Midnight Express. <laughs> <laughs> well, do you think there's still a reality show in your future? I think so. I just think I think I, I either have to get the money to just shoot a bunch of uh, episodes myself and then try to sell it, or you know what I mean. I don't know. I, yeah. I, I because just, it's I mean it just, just I mean you, this is the second time you've been on the show and it's always wonderful to see you and your persona as Hecklina has grown and dare I say it matured over oh. the years. No, I mean, it, it's, I, I think there are certain performers that get a, a certain look and a style and it doesn't change, but your performances, the things you've done, have changed and matured. I mean, you are an actor uh, underneath it. At least that's what I believe. Do you well, think that's, that's true? I, well, I'm doing much more theater than I used to, so that's true. Uh -huh. It's something I'm, I've become more interested in rather than staging a huge, messy, blood-soaked drag show, uh -huh. which, which I was more into in my youth, you know what I mean? Right. Um, so yeah, I guess I have matured. I definitely can't believe that I did a midnight drag show for 12 years on a Tuesday. Uh, that person, yeah, where'd, I, you the person the, yeah, where'd you get the energy? <clears throat> well, I was a lot younger then. Uh huh. And San Francisco was a different city back then. People went out on Tuesday night at midnight, you know what I mean? They just don't go out now. Uh, you can blame the uh, grinder and all that stuff for that. <laughs> so. in, in our last few minutes, talk to me about what is next for Hecklina. Well, um, my publicist will kill me if I don't give another plug for the Golden Girls. I understand. So uh, Opening December 6th. Opening yes, December yes, 6th. Yes. Uh, go to trannyshack.com for all the information. Um, what's next is I am going to take a break in January and uh, maybe do more radio after that. 
Um, and what do you mean more by radio? Theater. Radio performing or voiceover or? Well, I'm, I'm I work with Fernando and Greg. On, uh, I do a podcast with them every yes, week. Yes, they the old host of Energy Radio. Yes, now well, now they're on. miss them. Well, now they're on ninety nine point seven. Yeah. Um, and uh, I'm trying to. I, I taped a segment the other night for that, for the actual morning show. So uh, I'm going to start maybe potentially being a weekly person on the actual morning show, and I'd like to do that more, and uh, do more theater. And less traveling, and you know, I've been traveling a lot. I'm actually leaving for Portland this weekend, and then uh, Palm Springs next right, weekend. Right. You know, so, so less travel for Eclina, but maybe a reality show in your future. Let's do one together. I, I hold that thought. I will. I hold will. that thought. Okay. Next up, before our reality show, uh, my conversation with Rebecca Rolf, executive director of San Francisco's LGBT Center. We'll be right back. Thank you. <laughs>